Hello everyone, welcome back to I'm another gone. episode of Planescape Torment Game Chicken. And uh I'm gonna be looking uh for this guy now. Uh man. Took my skull. My 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 homie Mort. I see a thin stoop man hunched over a desk, scribbling on a piece of paper. His hair is thinning and drab, drawn back into a ponytail and the thin spectacles adorn his hooked nose. His age could be anywhere from his early 20s, early 20s to his late 40s. He doesn't look up as he speaks to you. What do you want? Make it quick. Yes, Guildspur asked me to deliver a handbill to you so they can print up 100 copies. He takes the handbill from me, looks it over and says, I'll have it for him later. Go tell it. They have to do it with work? Well, no. You're wasting your time and mine. Good day. He turns down to his desk. Don't you ignore me. Waves his hand and you find yourself outside his shop. Done. Okay, he's got... got powers. That's powers. It's each tower they're talking. What the hell's this place? Alright, well, this guy. Wasn't Byron, it was other dude. And bill is printed. 6,000 XP. Printed, terrific. I knew you were the man for the job. Here, take this message to Eldor of Urien at the Foundry. I'm sure he'll be glad to receive it. Glad of the hundred coins you get in return. Updated my feel journal. Stronger. Hopefully, spell memorization. Uh, plus one fist. Big independent. Any. And determine what this odd device is. Let's be on the other map. I can think. Often me uh, a wrecked house. Yes. For the purpose these barrels once served, they are now just flotsam strewn across the room. Ladder. Done. Usual window allows some light to filter the room. Cast strange colored shadows across the walls and floor. Yeah, I this game's really great. Hey, you bastard. Thank the powers you're here, Chief. Get me out of here. What are you doing up there? Those wear at vermin nicked me and brought me here. Come on, boss. We gotta get out of here. This place is bad news. I should just float down. I can't. I've tried. Come on, get me down before. Oh shit. So far, a flash of light and smoke blinds you for a moment. Withered old man stands before you. We have visitors, Skull? Have we visitors? Oh no. Mort whispers furiously to you. Do not offend this blood boss. He'll dead book you faster than you can spit. The old man ignores Mort. Greetings, traveller. Who might you be to enter Lofar Lofar's humble salon without invitation? I'll load the floor. My pardon, sir, but you seem to have something that belongs to me. Ah, yes. What might that be? My friend Mort wound up on your shelf. Want the chattering skull with half the grace and manners of any ordinary creature? Give me a greater skull in return if you wish. Back. Lofa replies, I do not need to bargain with something that is already mine. Can I find a greater skull? Move aside the divan in the center of the room and pass through the portal in the east in the chambers below to the catacomb. The portal will remain active for your return. In the catacombs, many skulls. One of the great one of the great value lies one of great value lies within the third crypts of the dustmen around nations. That skull to me as my wear out minions have failed to do, and I'll see that detour that your friend has returned to you. Perhaps I shall even answer some questions for you. I've been to the tomb you speak of. Updated it is empty. my journal. What is the meaning of this? 
Doom was so well trapped, so well defended from scrying magic that it was a challenge even for me. Must be some ex explanation for this. He draws out and he draws out these words angrily and slow. You will provide it to me. Go through the portal in the chambers below and seek the answer. I believe it, it was it was my own tomb. Your tomb. Your tomb. He's, uh, he eyes you carefully. We shall investigate this more carefully. Fetch me another skull then, as you seem attached to yours, and we shall see what answers I can provide. Our agreement shall be as before. Do not try to deceive me with just any bone either. I am something of a connoisseur. Return me. Turn to me when you have something of value Updated to me. Update my journal. Up again. Spell memorization. Thief points. Perhaps. Right. Um. um. Yeah. What you be want to know? Happening. Why not? All right. Hi. Right, Austin. Skulls. Skull the Silent King. You know, there's a reason why I hung onto it. Lothar takes the skull of the Silent King for you and gently cradles it. The Silent King, yes, this will be satisfactory indeed. He whispers to the skull, You shall reveal all your secrets to my newest friend. Fingers twist about through an arcane gesture. Your friend will be waiting for you above ground where you came in. Have your answers from me. Why am I immortal? My journal. Mortality, your soul, if you will, allows you to live and die is gone from you. Stripped from you by magical means by the night hag Ravel Puzzlewell. Mortality is the key to your existence. When you find it, we'll find your answers. Tell me about this Ravel. Ravel Puzzlewell is an enigma, even among the night hags. Some would call her Barmy, others say she plays a deeper game than any can see through. He is evil through and through, making the fiends you see in the area seem positively divine when compared to her. She is the, out of the reach of the men of men now. Thank the powers, for she was mazed by the Lady of Pain. Mazed? How do I find her? Mazes are like pocket dimensions, all places between places. For each one you need to find a portal and a key. I do not know where the door or the key are. Perhaps you should seek some of your old acquaintances. You have certainly left a trail of them behind. They will find you, no doubt. Pray they mean you well. Perhaps you should visit the Civic Fest Hall. I have many answers there. What did Ravel do? My journal. The maker of toys and puzzles, a solver of problems that didn't need solving. She decided that Sigil, the cage, was the largest puzzle box of all and set herself to undo it. Let in the armies of fiends at her disposal, no doubt, to upset the balance of the city and turn the entire burg into the charnel house. Pray to any power you hold dear with thanks she did not succeed. We'll find her then. All right. Eight. Oh, lightning, X of Tor. Those voices low and raspy, the sound of flint and steel. I think I think I've seen you before, stranger. Where have you seen me? First, gay town to Arseri. What are you, clueless? It's a gay town on the river of the Outlands. Or to the prison train in prison plain of Carceri. It's a place of backstabbers and traitors and sort of schemes. The Batizu's undergarments. Being right next door to Carceri is apt to change a burg's nature. I wouldn't be surprised if the town were about to slide over. What do you mean? For a gay towns when a gay town's belief get too much like the plains of borders, the force of that belief is strong enough to make the bordering plains swallow it whole. Happens all the time, at least when the anarchists are involved. Speaks this last with a kind of grim pride. Tell me about the anarchists. They are a secret society, souls of members who work alone or through directives passed through the network of informants, leaders who remain hidden. Our goal is to tear down the power structure, the free people from the lives of politicians and powers. Let all lead their own lives of their own volition. We work in secrecy, worked in secrecy. Changed our routines constantly to avoid infiltration. My time was decades ago, and so all the secrets I knew are no longer valid. Except for the faces I can remember, and even those must have been changed by now. You sound like a paranoid bunch. The society you belong to thrived on intrigue, infiltration, and the hatred of the established power mongers. You'd be careful too. 
not paranoia when they really are out to get you. An outliner believes someone involved in a triple cross is an amateur. Skull regards you evenly for a moment. I think I'm done speaking. Farewell. Dickhead skulls. Skull speaks with a deep voice in a jocular tone. You come to learn the truth. I have truth for plenty. Tell me of yourself. I, I am Stern, one of the great practitioners of personal peace through intensive redirection of hostilities. A hiss escapes the skull's teeth. You mean you're a wizard, an assassin, and a poisoner? Whoever you choose to define it, Grim Scalp. Stern turns his attention back to you. I was the best of the lot, so it's said. How'd you wind up here? Funny you should mention that. I had a black book given to me in order that I might puzzle out its secrets. I unlocked its powers for a terrible price, one I would gladly pay again. Sharpened my edge considerably. Little did I realize that the book betrayed me to another, a mewling rat thing that overwhelmed me in a wave of rodents and tore the flesh from my being, my living bones. The rat went through a series of disciples, each of them betrayed by the book until it wound up in the possession of the rat man Mantuok. You find this book, accept its powers, and be rid of it before you suffer the same fate. Keep an eye out. Updated my journal. Okay. Happened to you. Uh, tell me of Lothar. What can I what can I tell you of Lothar? I will tell you nothing. Even this bare existence is better than the oblivion he prompted if I speak his secrets. Tell me. You get the distinct impression Stern Skull is sneering at you. Gain merely your friendship? Bah! Nothing you can offer me. No service nor item that will impel me to betray Lothar to you. Be gone. I will not. Skull turns his attention inward. You can feel the force of its personality vanish. Skull exhales languorously, speaks in a sultry voice. Why do you disturb my rest? There's so much happening of late, and while I welcome the sensation, I must confess to desiring the sense of quiet. Tell me about yourself. I am. I was ocean before the storm, a censor. Now, alas, I am merely a decoration. A censor? What's that? A censor is a member of the Society of Sensation, one of the factions of Sigil, located in the test hall in the clerk's ward. Holds that the universe can be understood and manipulated only through the senses, therefore we should play as many varied experiences as possible. I believe I've reached a quota on sitting on dust the shelf. My boredom threshold is low. Can I do anything for you? Oh, but you're kind to ask. Once I threw myself off the shelf and shattered, next thing I knew I was back on the shelf and we were all glued here. When Lothar tires of me, he will dispose of me. Why, well, I sit on the shelf and gather dust until one of Lothar's rat minions takes it that I need brushing. I answer questions for Lothar, and that is the extent of this miserable existence. Oh, I meant, how did you get here? Long story that has to do with Ravel Puzzle World, the Night Hag. Would you like to hear the whole story? Yeah, right. Very well. I was working in the Civic Fest Hall, the headquarters of the Sensors. The Sensoriums. Ravel Puzzle World, may the powers curse her black soul, had been coming there to find answers to riddles she had encountered. She was a masterful solver of puzzles. Those that left our best minds baffled were but galls to the force of her reason. She had found difficulties that required outside answers. I heard that she was there to unlock the secrets of, of Sigil itself. Horribly ugly she was, taking no pains to use her magic to disguise her form, as I've heard she does, or rather did, from time to time. That fiendish exterior frightened off many po a potential faction here. Still, I had to ask her what she was about, whether she could teach me what she knew. That sounds like it could have been a mistake. It was. She offered me a bargain, for she bought and, bought and dealt in riddles. If she were to answer my question, I must agree to answer one of hers. If I missed the answer, my life was hers. I agreed. She told me she intended to unlock the puzzle of the cage, to open it to all who wished to enter. Powers, fiends, celestial, odrons, and smarty. Not to mention any inner planar beings who chose to come came along. The most important part to her was that all, all should know that the mystery that had baffled them for so long was unraveled by Ravel. What happened next? She asked her question. I could not answer it, but she assured me the answer was plain as the nose on her face. My fellow sensors found me screaming in the sensorium when they had arrived the next morning. I begged them to kill me and they complied. None even suggested that I relished the new experience. So horrible was it. And here I am. Now I must rest. Updated my journal. It was, how does one change the nature of a man? I fought hard on her answer and said with love. She said all people love themselves too much to be changed by something as love and then she she i must rest now in the back of your mind you seem to be see a hook nose figure with ebon skin asking you a question but you not answer you remember your answer skull stares blankly and says nothing 
Peace. Ends. Brandy shaped skull emits a high pitched shitter before it speaks to you. Can I help you? Who are you? I am G G Goat Scomb. I was a were rat. Were rat? How many were beasts are there anyway? Oh, a g great number. Ravens, wolves, bears, badgers, even crocodiles. It's like all, all the animals in the beast lands have a lycanthropic counterpart. It's quite interesting, really. What were rats are around here? There's Mantuok and his band. I made him, and what does he do? Goes and sells me to Lofar. That's okay, though. I spilled all his secrets to the boss. Mantuok may think he's safe, but Lofar knows everything. What can you tell me about Mantuok? That sodding hedge wizard. That bubba. I made him what he is today. Years ago, when he was just a stinking biped, I found him and made his leg a snack. It tasted like pickled meat. I was drunk for days, then he shows up. Then he gets some fancy book, and I'm yesterday's trash and a decoration on a shelf. Bastard. Do you know of any of his secrets? The secret is that he works for both Lofar and many as one. Cranium rat hive mind. I don't know what he was playing, but it doesn't matter because I told Lofar all of it anyway. Get here. It's embarrassing. I was in rat form looking for some at the smoldering corpse, and let's just say I never expected a serving wrench to have the silver fork. Mantork found me twitching and I wound up here. Some of the other skulls here. They're all mostly judgmental. Just because they were mostly human skulls, they think they're somehow better than me. I hate them! Like Lofar then, right? Okay. <laughs> I pissed him off. Done. There he is. Eat. Rescue. There we go. Hey, what's eating you, Chief? Um. You know about the Night Hag Ravel? Well, she's a Night Hag and she was definitely barmy enough to make you immortal of all people. I mean, she could have chosen me. What rolls his eyes? Still, anyone adult enough to lock blades with the Lady of Pain isn't someone we. What should we do next? I need to find out more about the Night Hag Ravel, and I have to tell you, Chief, I'm not looking forward to that. This tall sages and some of the sentry stones might be able to tell us something. This tall sentry stones? My journal. Sorry, Chief, I keep forgetting you have all the knowing of a green prime. Look, the Fest Hall is the main kit of the censored faction. They have libraries of sentry stones and store experiences. They have plenty of sages, lecturers, and trainers that might be able to tumble us onto the dark of what's up with Ravel. You're a memo, right? What is it you want then? Um, you heard of a night hag called Ravel Puzzlewell. Mention the name, Anna spits three times and makes a semicircle over her heart. This, are you daft? Don't be mentioning her name if you value your life. Why? She's the evilest of the grey ladies she is. Anna voices drops to almost a wisdom. Afraid of being overheard. Could be mean and with more power to toss around than some powers. It said she's all... All bram a brambles through and through, even her heart. It said you can never kill her because her body's like a tree. You lop off one limb and there's always another still growing somewhere. Across the plains. Speak as if she's alive. Of course she is. She has to be. Anna's voice drops again. How would you kill a thing such as her? That's why the lady had to maze her, so it's said. Um. And uh, when Farad went to return the tribute he took from my body, he vanished for a while and came back, but he never left Illwind Fort. Where he went? Oh aye. To hear tell, old stuttercratcher has got a dash pit somewhere close to him. The only reason I can see why he's set up in that tip in that filthy drafty hall it is. Nothing but stink and shadows. Really? And where does plan to bob him? Oh, I've no cause to do such a thing. Farrah's done me no harm. Well, good. I'm warning you against such a thing. I'm... F I am. Farrah can be daft sometimes, but he's mean as all fiends spit when he gets worked up, she frowns. And he loves his keepsakes, he does. Where does he... Where would he keep it all? If he's been at the village for so long, as he says, he could have massed quite a collection. Well, Anna is silent for a moment. I know he's never left his hall to get his tribute when he needed it. Wouldn't want to walk by with that lame, tame, lame leg of his, though. Aye, that's true. Only if you don't watch him careful. He isn't lame, though he puts on a fair show about being weak in the legs. So that crutch of his could be a portal key? 
Anna frowns in thought for a moment, then slowly nods her head. Aye, there's a fort. She shrugs. I wouldn't know how you'd use it, though. Maybe you just need to have it. Maybe we'll find a help. Did you find anything on my body before you pull me? Sure. Anna looks at you warily, and her tail stops flicking for a moment, then stole them before. I may have. I found something, but if I found anything, it's mine by right. It is. The other bits are in Farad's keeping. And I don't have time for games. What did you find on my corpse? Well, you had some fist signs you did, and a little bit of jink, but I left that for the dusty so they'd think I was a wee bit honest. You had an ugly ring that I kept. She dips her finger into her arm brace and pulls a small ring of stone mounted on it. Worth thrice more than the jink of the irons it was. She studies the ring and squints. Too bad it's too ugly to wear. I like the ring back. Studies the ring of her frown, glances at you, then back at the ring. With a sneer, she flicks the ring to you know I want the ugly thing anyway, I didn't. Fine, now when you mentioned that some stuff on my body had gone to Farad's keeping, what did you mean? Aye, Farad takes a bit off every corpse we find he does. It's his right, being lord of the village and all. Off of every corpse you all find? That's a lot of corpses. Oh aye, to hear tell, old Stuttercraft has got a stash pit. Okay. Ah, blah, 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 blah. Um, did I meet you in the hive before I found Farad? She nods a little warily. Ah, you did. I haven't forgot. Yeah. I asked about Farad. You told me he was south and west of the mortuary when he wasn't. Aye, I did. And you'd have done the same if you'd some scared, scarred wreck came to you and asked where you could find your da. She shrugs. You found him anywhere, so I don't want to hear you carrying on about it. I don't. What were you doing by the mortuary? My territory. I was looking for debtors. I was. She looks you up and down, then smirks. Found a walking one. All right. All right. Yeah. Ring, ring of the Traveler. Oh, the ring of the. Now we have ring. Moron. Hey. I keep checking on that. No, it upgrades. I'm gone. Asleep. Merchant. Oh, so you need to press, you don't even have to like go for the cutscene. Sell a bunch of junk. I'm assuming I've just thought of it, but I'm assuming I need that cheese to, uh uh poison the rat or something. That's all I can think of. It needs a friend. Who suck the Apisho? I think I should have told that gave that woman a but... done. Emrus Dimitri. I see a rugged looking square jawed man. He turns to you with a wide smile. How are you, Cutter? Good day to you. Good day indeed. Squint squirms at you. I oh, squirm. Squints at you for a second, then juts out his hand to shake your. Shake his hand. Amrus at your service. Remember the harmonium and the fashion of fine coffins. Parted. I think I know you. Do I not? Let me see if I can place it. He pauses to think a moment. Sharp with names, I was in the harmonium. Let me tell you. Knew everyone on the ward. Name is Adarn. <laughs> Snaps his fingers. Of course, Adarn. I knew I recognised you. Anyway, you require my services. That is you, then smile, seeing the opportunity for a joke at your expense. It seems to me, sir, that you are one you are one in desperate need of a coffin, and soon. Your friend here. Glances at the customer. Dimtree? He shrugs like he didn't... Like he hadn't considered the fellow before. Quiet doesn't say much, do you, Dimtree? Dimtree doesn't respond, but simply gives the same blank expression. A few seconds later, he nods. Amorous shrugs, turns back to you. Wandered in one day for... A, he weeks back, been a regular ever since. He hasn't bought anything, but he doesn't cause any trouble, so I let him stay. 
seems harmless enough, you see. When I was serving the harmonium, part of our work was to take people under our wing, give them a little shelter from the chaos of the streets, get them spruced up. About this ward? Yes, the lower ward. He leans forward as if explaining something to a child. You know, it's little known to most newcomers and even people in the ward. Most people think that this ward gets its name simply because it's not as prestigious as the other wards, but that's not at all true. Not at all. You know where the, the name comes from? Hmm? He looks at you expectantly. Or the lower plane portals. Nods, though, he seems a little disappointed that you know. Yes, indeed. These portals to the lower planes are actually the reason for the smog in the skies here. He glances upward as if imagining a sky above your heads, but I'm sure you're already aware of the conditions that plague this board. Tell me about the city of Sid. Let's add a long breath. Sigil is the city at the center of all things. So many believe. It is a city of doors. There are literally thousands of people here. Home to the Lady of Pain herself. Rug Sigil is a topic that can fill volumes and volumes of volume. You mentioned portals. Do you know of any? He laughs. Portals? Do I know about portals? He pauses. Well, none personally except for the more common ones. I imagine they can be found in practically every ward. Portals are funny things. Sometimes they shift around and other times they simply seem to vanish. They're hard to keep track of. A tall slender man with a glassy-eyed expression. Seems engrossed in some tale that the shopkeeper is relating. Occasionally he nods his head but makes no comment of his own. Man turns slightly at your greeting just enough to acknowledge your presence. You notice he's a little pale of complexion and rather gaunt. Even your blank stare. The shopkeeper does not seem to notice any of this and continues with his dream of you rattle. Right? Man continues to stare at you and slowly nods. You wait for any further response, but he says nothing, only stares. You're about to turn away in frustration when you notice a strange musty odor about the man. Step closer and sniff. Lean in and sniff at the man, unsure what you'll find. If you do, a musty odor fills your senses, an odor you recognize from your time in the mortuary. There's a smell of dead flesh preserved by magic. You're a zombie, aren't you? The creature continues to stare at you blankly, slowly as if with great effort. Begins to reply to you, only you or speak with dead power makes him understandable. Yes, I am Imtri. Are you here? Imtri slowly glances at the shopkeeper and makes a feeble gesture to Seeing this as a sign of interest, the shopkeeper redoubles his efforts in telling the tale he's relating to the poor creature. Imtri looks at you again, Hamrus. He talks. Hamrus never stops. Wanders town, annoys master, annoys everyone. Master creates dim. Tell Dimtree talk hammerers. Now hammerers stay in shop. Master happy. Town happy. Dimtree sad. Is there anything I can do to help you? The creature pauses and resumes his slow speech with you. You can almost detect a pleading tone in his voice. Yes. Find master. Sebastian. Ask him release me. Please. He turns his attention to hammerers momentarily. Please. Actually, why don't I just put you out of your misery? Imtri barely shakes his head at you. No, Master revive. Must ask Master. Bastion, please. Go on, Dimtri. I'll see what I can journal. do for you. Right. I'm gone. He's literally like talking his All ear right. off. What's in this section? Uh, I'm assuming this is. Oh, God, the map screen now. Kind of useful though. Quickly, I'll go to the uh, alley of lingering eyes. Wait, the alley? Does the alley change layout? I'm gone. Dude, that's two. Realize. It's really cool though. Look how the alley changes. I never talk to my friend again. The, the face in the wall. I'm gone. Um, got me. Nothing. Jack shit. I was thinking I was All discovering right. a, a new place. Do I have to hand the? I'm gone. Run! Hey, this one going?
Aqui. I don't know where she is. Ab. Yeah, that. Investigate that a bit further. Thank you. We'll end it here. Thank you guys for watching. Join me next time where I'll I've track a little bit back to them. Apparently, we we'll talk about uh, what's her face, Deriana or whatever her name is, ghost girlfriend. Might have some more today since we've uh, progressed quite a bit. Sorry. So yeah, join me next time for that. See you guys.